Hi, you've clicked on today's Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, September 29th, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, here's the Atlantic, and we have a lot to talk about in regards to Tropical Storm Joaquin here, which is a now a named tropical cyclone and quickly becoming a bigger threat as time goes on, and especially now in the short term to the Bahamas, which we'll talk about in a bit. But first, uh, how it's looking today, a little bit better than yesterday. You can still see that this ridge over the western Bahamas is inducing a northwesterly flow over the storm and that shear is pushing a lot of the heavy thunderstorms into the southeastern quadrant but if we look at the zoomed in floater we see that the low level center is no longer fully exposed like it was yesterday and is now partially underneath of this deep convection on the eastern side and we talked yesterday about the excellent low level structure of this circulation and how if it is allowed to couple at least even partially with this convection that that could help concentrate the heating lower pressure in the air column and strengthen the storm and that does seem to be what's happening so far today this was the recon mission from earlier a few hours ago went through found a pass of 990 millibars in the center it was uh, it fell four millibars during the course of the mission during the two passes uh, indicating that this storm was rapidly intensifying during the time that the plane was in there and you see these red barbs indicating 60 knot about 70 mile per hour winds at flight level on the eastern side of the system again indicating that this has strengthened a lot since yesterday despite still being kind of sheared here you can see that it really wants to deepen and this indicates that once it becomes fully vertically stacked and these thunderstorms fully cover the uh, circulation this is likely to become a hurricane in pretty short order once that happens however there is still about 24 hours left of this shear on the eastern side of this ridge here inducing this northerly flow over the system. But as Joaquin moves more underneath here, uh, slowly to the west over the next day or so, that wind shear will lessen and could allow some fairly quick strengthening over some of the warmest waters in the Atlantic. This overall is a pretty favorable place for a hurricane to develop in the Atlantic, especially in an El Nino season like this, where the MDR is largely unfavorable. This is the region that becomes favorable with time. So once the shear lightens, we could see this try to take off, similar to what it's doing today but as a full-fledged hurricane. Now, here's the issue with the system is obviously the complex track forecast. Here's the current spaghetti from 18Z today, and just illustrating the variety of scenarios that are possible with the system, we essentially have two different camps. Uh, one camp bringing the system toward the eastern seaboard with time as a trough digs into the southeast coast and the storm phases with that trough and moves northwest and then there are some other models like the older run of the GFS, the GFDL, and the European which bring the system toward the east and out to sea perhaps affecting Bermuda but largely away from land. Now uh, there's a lot going on here. You can see first of all the tight clustering during the first three days indicating very slow movement of Joaquin and that's due to a very complex pattern that we call a call, C-O-L, uh, that has to do with four circulations around the hurricane. I'll try to outline them for you. One is uh, a mid to upper level ridge here, a high pressure area near Cuba. That's the same one that's currently shearing it. There's the trough that's going to be digging into the southeastern U.S. with time. That's a low pressure area. There's the big high to the north of the front out in the central Atlantic. And then there's the low associated with the remnants of tropical storm Ida in the mid to upper levels and even a low level reflection here. So this is another low. And in the middle here, is an area of weak steering currents. This is called the call in between these four circulations and Joaquin is uh, right there in the middle where it's very hard to predict the steering and where the storm may go. Very slight shifts in track can change which direction the storm goes because all four of these circulation cells are essentially in a tug of war trying to pull Joaquin in different directions. And I'll just show you what's going on with the European, which is currently one of the more interesting solutions and also more concerning for the Bahamas. This is out to day three from this morning's run, showing a deepening hurricane that essentially moves due southwest toward the central Bahamas. And uh, that is largely due to this high over Cuba and the western Bahamas here. This is helping to 
uh, tug the system toward the south due to this northerly steering flow on the western side and as the storm deepens into a hurricane it starts to feel that flow and gets tugged south on the European and its ensembles into the Bahamas and this is of a growing concern that we could be seeing tropical storm or even hurricane conditions in some of these islands in a couple of days and the NHC has recently acknowledged that there may be watches necessary very soon for parts of the Bahamas. So we'll be monitoring that very closely. Some of the other models do not bring this as far south and instead of a slower westward drift more toward the northern Bahamas but then a turn to the north before hitting Abaco Island and Grand Bahama there. Um, but there are very subtle differences because what the European does here is diving southwest like this keeps it in the Bahamas for a longer time. The system is slower, it's more sluggish, and it's farther south. So when this trough in green and yellow here dives into the southeastern United States, while some models have it phasing with the trough and moving toward the northwest, toward the United States, the European has kept it around here for so long that actually the mid-level low associated with Ida to the east ends up winning the tug of war and pulling this northeast toward Bermuda here in the longer range. This is out to day five on Sunday. So basically the tug of war between the trough to the west and the trough to the east gets won by the eastern trough and this moves away from the United States and largely out to sea although it affects Bermuda on this run impossible to know if that will actually happen at this point. That's just one solution. There are other model solutions which are not as far south and as slow as the European that instead phase the hurricane with the trough and anywhere from North Carolina to New England get hit on some of those model forecasts. And right now what the NHC is doing is kind of taking the middle of the road of all of these possibilities and showing a slow drift southwest toward the Bahamas. And again, they say that watches may be needed for some of these islands fairly soon. And then an acceleration toward the north, kind of in the middle of the possibilities where the track could be toward the northeast or toward the eastern seaboard of the United States or New England in the longer range. And uh, this cone of uncertainty here really doesn't reflect the actual uncertainty and reality of the situation. The cone probably should look a little bit more like this with Joaquin right now. That's how many different things could occur with a setup like this. With this kind of a steering pattern with a trough coming down, there have been storms that come right up the eastern seaboard and cause problems. And almost universally, when there's a trough involved like this, a highly amplified negatively tilted trough, there is a lot of rain and flooding problems when there's a hurricane coming in. And even without the hurricane, this low-level flow with moisture piling in to this blocking to the north here, you see all this high pressure to the north, this is a big heavy rain event for the eastern seaboard either way, even without the hurricane. If the hurricane piles into the situation, it becomes even more dangerous. So should you be thinking along the eastern seaboard about preparing for Joaquin? Absolutely. Make sure you have a plan ready to go in case it comes your way, but we don't have any details as to who exactly could be affected. All that we're certain about is that the Bahamas are at increasing risk during the next couple of days uh, for uh, dealing with an intensifying Joaquin and possibly a very quickly intensifying hurricane. Uh, but beyond that, there's a lot that can happen. The stronger the hurricane gets, the more interaction that it can have, its radius of influence increases and allows this trough a greater opportunity to pick it up and the tug of war could be finished in different ways by these different influences on the storm. So overall, a very complicated situation. Here's the current Hurricane Center forecast. Keep up to date with them for the latest information in your local weather offices if it becomes clear that your state may be affected by this storm, but there are still several days to watch it. Currently, the only imminent threat is to the Bahamas and uh, those folks should be preparing in case this does come all the way down and start impacting the islands directly in a couple of days as it moves slowly over warm water. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.